Hello friends, this video on life processes part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Transportation. So what are we going to study about transportation? So while we were talking about respiration, I told you that the gases which are absorbed is transferred between the alveoli and the capillaries and capillaries are the blood vessels which transmit or which transport the blood to different parts of the body. Now, how this transportation take place? How are capillaries so powerful that they can reach each and every corner of the body, each and every cell of the body and transport gas, the oxygen to them? So, in this, we are going to talk about the transportation. So, the question is, what is transportation? So, in the overview slide of respiration, we only talked about the transportation of oxygen. But it is not only oxygen that is needed by each and every cell of the body. It is also the food, the nutrients, everything. They, the cells need everything actually. So, here we will see how exactly the transportation of various objects like the enzymes, the hormones, the gases, the water, how all these things are transported to each and every corner of the body. For example, in the respiration process, oxygen is carried from lungs to the cells and carbon dioxide is carried from the cells to the lungs. So that is also handled by this transportation process. Right? So here we will see how the pro process of transportation is made organized because you, you just look at the body of a human being. It is so very complex. Right? So you have one on one side, you have good air containing oxygen running from lungs to the cells and on the other side you have the bad air containing lot of carbon dioxide running from the cells to the lungs. So can you imagine what would happen if they get mixed? A complete mess up will happen and the body will not function well. So there has to be a proper system of transportation which has to be very well organized. Right Now this transportation system is not only needed in animals but it is also needed in plants because in plants also we saw that plants prepare their food by photosynthesis. So the food is prepared and stored in the leaves of the plant but does that mean that it is only the leaves which need food and nutrients? Each and every corner, each and every part of the plant needs them. So the food needs to be transported from leaves to all other parts. Similarly, the water which the plant receives that also needs to be transported to each and every part of the plant. So that transportation of water and minerals and the food in plants also falls under this transportation. So transport of oxygen, water, food, hormones, etc. to different parts of the body is called internal transport. It is known as internal transport because the transportation takes place within our body. It is not visible from outside. So that is why it is called internal transport. So here we will first talk about the internal transport in humans. Why are we going to talk about humans first? Because just now we finished our discussion on the respiratory system in human beings. So if I start with the uh, transport system in human beings, it will be easier for you to understand now because the respiratory system is still fresh in your mind, right? Now the internal transport system in humans is known as the circulatory system circulatory the word circulatory has come from the word circulation so here in this picture you can see that you can see that there are some tube like structures which are carrying blood everywhere there are some green blue lines there are some red lines we will talk about them what do they denote but here you can see that blood is flowing to each and every part of the body so we say that blood is actually carrying the things to each and every corner of the body. So each part or each cell needs all of the oxygen, the nutrients, enzymes and hormones. And also each wants to get rid of the undesired substances like the wastes. For example, inside each cell, so many metabolic activities are happening. So there are some waste products also. So they do not want to keep the waste products. So the waste, so each cell needs all the good things and they also want to get rid of all the bad things. So the good things as well as the bad things, both are transported by means of some fluids. So the movement of these fluids throughout the body is termed as circulation and that is why this system is known as the circulatory system.
so we call it as circulatory system in human beings so we are now going to study about the circulatory system let us now look at the different parts or the different organs which together constitute the circulatory system of our body the circulatory system consists of the heart i mean i don't it is a needless to tell you what is heart we all know it is a very important organ of our body now what is the role of this heart in circulatory system heart basically acts as a pump which actually makes the blood flow for example you would have seen the hand pumps right which is used to fetch water from the ground so what happens when you apply pressure on that on the handle the water comes out from the bottom it the water comes up from the bottom here also in this picture you can see look, look at this water filter so when this person gives a pressure on top the water is fetched from the downward so water comes up through this pipe and it is fetched into this glass so that means this pressure so this is acting as a pump so this pump will actually fetch the liquid from the ground so similarly the heart acts as a pump which actually regulates how the blood has to flow or how the fluid has to flow so heart is the pump of the circulatory system so heart has all the control of the circulatory system so other than heart we have arteries veins and capillaries what are these three these three are nothing but the blood vessels as i mentioned before also blood vessels means they are vessels the word vessel means container so container containing blood that means these are some kind of vessels which actually carry blood from one place to another so they are the blood carriers other than that we have blood and lymph these are the fluid like substances so they they actually form the circulating medium so they form the circulatory medium because the whatever it is the gases or the food materials or the nutrients or the waste products they are carried through this medium of blood or lymph now this blood how this blood flows this blood are enclosed in the blood vessels now there are three types of blood vessels arteries veins and capillaries and who controls the movement of blood throughout the body the heart so these things together constitute the human circulatory system so now we will try to understand the functioning of the circulatory system and the purpose of each of these organs in detail so first let us try to understand what is the significance of circulatory system why at all do we need to study about circulatory system or why at all do we have a separate life process called transportation it helps in transport of gases when i say transport of gases you can think of the transport of oxygen from lungs to the different cells of the body and the transport of carbon dioxide from different cells of the body to the lungs right it also helps in transport of nutrients for example glucose which is used to produce atp what is glucose glucose is the food in its simpler form so this glucose which is used to produce atp is transported throughout the body right so this transportation is also done by the circulatory system transport of hormones there are so many hormones inside our body right so those hormones also need to be transported to different body parts because hormones have some specific function of their own we have so many hormonal traits like right? the male hormones the female hormones which give characteristics or which give rise to characteristics in a person so these hormones also need to be transported to different body parts transport of wastes from cells so when we talk about wastes you see that during digestion there are so many waste products which are formed for example urea so this urea what do we do with the urea the urea needs to be transported to the kidneys for excretion because in in the human body system there is another system called excretory system which we will talk about after the circulatory system so who will transport that waste product for example urea to the kidney so the circulatory system has to transport urea to the kidney and then kidney will take care of the excretion process transport heat to maintain 
body temperature as i said in case of warm blooded animals they always want to keep their body temperature constant so in order to keep their body temperature constant they need some energy so that also is transported with the help of the circulatory system contains cells that fight infection now this the component of this circulatory system that is blood blood contains a component called white blood cells which help to fight infection so white blood cells present in the blood are a kind of soldier to our body that means it helps to fight infection and it builds the immunity of the body against diseases so these are some of the significance of the circulatory system so with this we will talk about the circulatory system in animals let us now talk about the circulatory system in animals so when i talk of animals it is not only the human beings which we are going to talk about there are many other varieties of animals as well so let us see what kind of circulatory system are present in different types of animals now basically there are two types of circulatory system one is open circulatory system and the other one is closed circulatory system so what is the difference between the two what is open and closed circulatory system so open circulatory system is the one where we have something called hemolymph what is hemolymph it is a fluid which is a mixture of blood that is hemo and the interstitial fluid that is the fluid which flows in in the body cavities so there is just one fluid which is mixture of blood and the normal tissue fluid so in this case blood is pumped by heart in the blood cavities so there is no concept of blood vessels in case of the open circulatory system the blood just flows throughout the entire body and the organs of that organism they they are like uh, they bath in the blood so they are all floating in the blood it is like that so all the body cavities are filled with the fluid called hemolymph it is generally found in lower organisms like mollusks and arthropods arthropods i am sure you are aware of these terms mollusks and arthropods we have spoken about them in the lesson on diversity in living organisms in class 9th so these are the classes where we see open circulatory system there is another type of circulatory system which is closed circulatory system so here blood is enclosed in blood vessels now as soon as you enclose the blood into vessels things become organized and moreover when you enclose blood inside some vessels the pressure of the blood also increases therefore the blood flows because of the pressure so here the blood and the interstitial fluid are separated from each other so blood is enclosed in the blood vessels and the interstitial fluid which is also known as lymph is present in the body cavities so they are separate here blood and lymph are separate so blood is pumped by heart through blood vessels and doesn't normally fill the body cavities so it is not that blood just flows everywhere inside the body they are in a well organized manner that means the blood flows inside proper blood vessels it is generally found in vertebrates and some invertebrates too so most all vertebrates have closed circulatory system including human beings fishes amphibians reptiles birds all of them have a closed circulatory system so now in this lesson we will talk about the closed circulatory system in detail thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again